What if I was to tell you that you could get this fine limited edition art print for only $19.95, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome back to the Underground Laboratory where we create robots, alien zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. And sometimes we take those things and we put them on products and we put them up on our online store and uh, we try to get them out to you. Now, I know that little intro was a little huckstery, but the truth is, I really think you should think about putting your artwork on products and there's a lot of good reasons why i want to talk about some of those you know and it could be whatever the possibilities are endless there's so many different ways you can get your artwork out there whether it's you know on stickers or prints or you know maybe a little mini movie poster with a growing brain that you add water to those are just some of the things that that i do but the like i said the doors are wide open there's products and things out there just waiting for you to put your mark on and uh and there's some really really good reasons why just moving forward the way you know the way people are thinking the way people are buying uh i think it's a good idea and i want to talk about that so let's get to it Lately, I've been concentrating a lot of my efforts on building a line of products. Uh, one of those products I kind of showed in the beginning was a line of stickers that I'm doing. So just on the video, what I'm showing you is sort of the process of creating one of those stickers. And I did a whole sticker video before you guys can check that out. Um, but it's really important, I think, nowadays to sell products that feature your work. And there's a few reasons for that. Um, one, I think the most important reason is that it is just so easy nowadays, just the companies out there that allow you to do this, to put your artwork on different products at, base, at really, you know, almost no upfront investment from you other than your time. So I've been using a company called Printful, and again, I've done uh, videos on that company for t-shirts, but they offer all kinds of other products too as well, um, like hats, mugs, uh, bags, socks, leggings, pillows, and you know, that's just one company. There's several of these companies out there. Other companies allow you to make stickers. Those aren't the ones that I'm going through. Certain products I... I tend to produce myself, but other ones I will kind of sub out and have them drop ship at that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But so some of these other companies, you know, like I said, stickers, uh, phone cases, they've got shower curtains and bedspreads, backpacks, beach towels, you name it. Um, and, and like I said, they, they drop ship this stuff. So you don't have to actually buy this stuff and print it yourself. And they don't mass produce these. They it's it's print on demand. So if somebody orders a shower, say a shower curtain with one of your designs on it, they will print that up and they'll ship it to that person. And some companies like Printful will actually put your own branding and everything on it. And that's super cool because uh, the customer doesn't know the difference that way. I mean, you could really look like you're this huge company that supplies all these different things, um, and other people are doing all the work. And as long as you can drive that traffic, then um, you're in really good shape. So that's kind of the direction I'm going to. Now, there's other products that I tend to kind of make myself. Um, I have a line of bow ties, and there's a company out there called um, Spoonflower that I go through, and they can basically print your designs on almost any kind of fabric you can think of, whether it's, I think they can do canvas or whatever, but they, you know, like a sort of like a faux silk or, you know, all different kinds of fabrics. Um, in different weights and everything like that. So I, like I said, I, I have my designs printed on the, the fabrics and then my girlfriend sews bow ties for them and I create the packaging and, and it's kind of a group effort there. But if you have the ability to sew or know somebody who, who can do that for you or you want to partner up with somebody, I mean, you can do, you can have your own line of plushies or whatever. You can have them pre-printed and then, you know, sew them together. There's so many, and the, you know, I'm just touching the surface on some of the different products you can do. Um, and of course, comic books. If you're a comic creator like myself, now with print on demand, with like Amazon Create Space, you don't have to order a ton of books. I mean, there's there's advantages like you could go to Amazon Create Space, you could upload your files, and you can print some out for yourself if you've got some money to spend. But if you're low on funds, you can you can just upload your files, and if you can send that traffic to order those books, 
they'll ship them out for you and everything and you won't even have to worry about it so a lot of this is like passive income which is super awesome um, I do a little bit of both I've got some products that I kind of create myself some that are totally passive where somebody else will print it out for me ship it and everything and like I said the only investment for me on that kind of uh, product is my time in creating the artwork and then actually you know setting up the you know the files and and setting up the store and that does take some time but I really think it's worth it and I, I think it's something you you guys want to think about if you're an artist um, because it's you know people nowadays they consume pretty much everything digitally so they're people are longing for physical tangible items uh, and a lot of those items you know feature artwork and they like to show off artwork they want to show off you know cool stuff and if you're somebody who makes cool stuff then you're in a position where you can you know you can be profitable selling your artwork on products because you know sure somebody can download your artwork or if you're a musician a lot of times it's really difficult to sell your music because it's so easy for somebody to to download that so you kind of have to think uh, out of the box so to speak where you know look at some of the look at some of the companies out there uh, look at the modern day record store because records you know because music in general it's so easy to get digitally you know people aren't buying a lot of music but there is a niche market for like you know old school vinyl records now if you go into a record store I mean there are people who really like that because it's tangible they remember that feeling of you know you got the nice big artwork and you know and just it's a it's a different sound than the digital stuff you get so there's a lot of people that that really gravitate towards that but now if you go into a record store but that's just like I said that's just a small niche if you go into a record store a lot of what they're selling you know they may sell used books or they may sell a lot of what they're selling are like pop culture like you know novelties and things um, because people like to collect you can't I mean it's not that fun to collect digital items so people want to collect physical things even though a lot of what we consume is digital there's still there's all that more reason why people want something that they can hold and it doesn't work for everything but a lot of things you can find ways to make it work find ways to put your artwork on products that that people will will appreciate and and want to purchase so you know we talk about record stores um, look at look at like Barnes and Nobles because people are consuming a lot of their books nowadays digital whether it's on a tablet or audiobooks or whatever and you can download that 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 can really hit obviously a bookstore hard a lot of them went out of business so what Barnes & Noble is doing if you look look at how much time or how much sorry space that they've allocated towards like board gaming and again sort of that same model as the record stores like pop culture like figurines and things like that that's a massive you know part of what they're selling now what they're pushing because you know you know people the books are just so easy to get online but this other stuff isn't so much and and what you really want to do you want to sell an experience um, so when they start selling board games because that's something people get together and you know play board games together and everything and it's just not the same as as some you know digital games and things like that and speaking of games look at your modern day arcades so you've got you know whether it's like a Chuck E. Cheese or out here I mean we've got like um, Dave and Buster's I don't know where you depending on where you are but you probably have something similar to that um, and when you go there now there are there are arcades that specialize in sort of that the retro old school uh, video game console not consoles but you know I don't know what's the the uh, the are they called consoles the, no I think that's more like the home thing I'm thinking uh, cabinet like cabinet games like the old school stuff you used to play in the 80s um, and that's real fun and I go to some of those but as far as kids who don't have that kind of nostalgia if you go to a modern arcade a lot of the games are things that you can't really play at home um, you're not gonna see you know you're not gonna see the same video games that you can play on your home game system in an arcade you're gonna see games that you can't really do at home like games where you ride on like you know whether it's a motorcycle game or a racing game where you can kind of get in the cockpit and everything like that or motion rides or big giant you know four-player Pac-Man games where it's more of an experience it's got to be something different that you can't get from your average digital experience and if you walk through your 
arcades, you're going to see how different the video games and things that they have in there are. There's always sort of a more active angle. I mean, now, you know, of course, we're moving in towards virtual reality, so that may, they may have to change again if you can kind of get that experience at home. Um, same thing with, uh, you know, movie theaters. Why, I mean, why, other than, you know, you've got your first run movies, some people want to go out and see that, but in selling experience, I mean, people. some people may like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a cool movie, but I think I'll just wait till I get home because now, you know, we have the technology that, you know, if you're... If you've got the money to spend, you can create a pretty awesome home theater at home. So why go out to the movie theater? So you need to sell that experience. And like companies like theaters like Alamo Draft Houses and even some of the other chains, the bigger chains are kind of moving more towards that model. But uh, one of the things Alamo Draft House does is they sell, they're selling like pint glasses and things like that with, you know, artwork from the movies on there. And you can order that pint glass online. You've got your collectible. But in order to get that, you go out, you go to the theater, you pick up your pint glass, and it comes with a ticket. So you can kind of sell these package things. And again, you've got your kind of keepsake thing that you don't really get from just watching your movie at home. So you got to got to kind of think like that and think of how you can sell something that people can't something that people can't get you know digitally um if you're if you're selling comics or you could find ways to package your digital products in ways where it's a little something extra for instance now with now that we've got free printing and everything say if you've got a, a character from your comic book and if you can do a really cool 3d printed version of that and somehow you can make it so you can fit like a little thumb drive inside of it or something and you can put your digital comic on that thumb drive and where somebody normally may not want to you know spend a lot of money on your digital product if you wrap it if you package it with a like I said a 3d version of one of your characters or something and include that digital product you get that with it so um, I do you know one thing that I'm doing because there's so if you just the the thing that really intrigues me and the thing that really gets me going is that all this stuff is out there. You have the ability if you track down, if you go on, say like Alibaba or whatever, you can make enamel pens, which are another big thing, which is something I really want to get into. Those you know those are a little different. I mean the prices are are pretty reasonable, and you don't have to get huge amounts, but you still do have to make that upfront investment. There's I don't know of any uh, print on demand uh, enamel pen places yet. I don't think that's that's a reality yet. It may be in the future. I don't know. Um, but one of the things that that I do is I, you know, I look through. You know, I can go to like Oriental Trading Company or Alibaba, and I can find things that kind of fit with my mad scientist themes. Little toys, little novelties, and some of these are just basic things. And on their own, they really don't. You know, they're really not all that. You know enticing to the consumer but if you take those and you package them in such a way so I show in the beginning I showed my little brain thing so I can get the little brains I get them you know I buy buy them in bulk I get a bunch of them um, but they're just you know little plastic brains in a little package and the, the packaging is not that great but then you know you go out and you go source some other things and you can find all this stuff in line you do some digging and you know I found some cool tins and I created my own packaging for them and I created a story around that and I you know I used you know what I do best. I use my artistic abilities to design little mini posters that go with these. So I've got these three different products and then, you know, I wanted it to seem like they were from an old, you know, 50s style B sci-fi movie. So I've got like, you know, Attack of the Glob or Night of the 50 Foot Brain or whatever and I tie them to these little products. And like I said, on their own, they're not much, but when you package them like that, they become something else and you know, you, and you can charge a little more of a premium for those that you normally wouldn't because you're, you're selling a story. And you know, it's kind of like the old saying in marketing, sell the sizzle, not the steak, where the actual product might not be the, all that great, but when, you, when you're able to put a story around that, package it a little, packaging like that, then you know, then people gravitate a little more towards it. So um, yeah, so those are some of my thoughts, but I really think now with, uh, with just all the stuff that is around us, all the ways that we can put our artwork on products, um, and again, you wanna, you, you wanna think of ways, things that other people aren't doing, um, 
And those are out there, and with a little creativity, you can come up with some of those ideas. So those are some of my thoughts, and those are some of the reasons why I really think you should think about putting, not just, I mean, we all sell prints, and I sell a lot of prints, and uh, you know, you can see some of the stuff that I'm showing now. I'm kind of going through my store and showing you some of the different products and things that I make. So I've got all kinds of different things, and uh, you know, I really, I really get into coming up with ideas for, you know, all these different products and some of them sell some of them don't um, but as I go on and I continue to market these things it's it's just cool to have like to me it's cool to have a store with all this stuff and again my whole thing is mad science so I try to tie it all around you know that mad scientist angle yours may be something entirely different but try to figure out a way to present all all these and you know take your artwork and you know you want to sell your prints and everything but think of different ways you can other ways you can print your products because you know when I'm out and about I'm always you know looking at some if I'm looking at a store or whatever anything that I see out in the real world I try to say is that something I can put my artwork on what can I put my artwork on so I think it's a good idea for you guys to kind of think the same way so again just to wrap it up think of ways you can put your artwork on products there's so many ways that I told you right now gave you some ideas but I'm sure you have your own with a little creativity and uh, so yeah let me know what you guys have in mind or you know if you if you want to keep it a little secretive that's okay too but um, really start thinking of just in other than just prints what else can you put your products or put your artwork on what kind of products can you do that because uh, I think in today's day and age just like I said the way the market is going the way people are becoming more collectors um, the people are always going to buy you know now's the digital age people are always going to consume digital products but the more that they do that the more they're going to long for physical goods so start thinking about that all right, so I hope I've given you some food for thought and you're starting, the wheels in your head are starting to turn, thinking about how I can take my artwork and put it on some products and get it out there. Maybe make an online store if you don't already have one. Uh, but if you have any questions about that type of things, I'm going to be putting out some videos about that. But uh, other than that, let me know in the comments section what you're thinking of. Uh, and if I can help in any way, I, I will try to do that. Anyway, I will see you guys later. That is all. We got all kinds of stuff at surfworks.com. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for joining me here in the Art Lab. There's a lot of other great content on the channel, so click that subscribe button and you won't miss a thing. If you're an aspiring evil genius, visit surfworks.com for all your mad science supply needs. And if you want to contact me, hit me up in the comments section or follow me on social media. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you then.